In this lesson, we will learn about interpolation types we can choose for function curves in 3ds Max. If we were to hit play in this scene, we'll see our creature falling from the ceiling. So what we'll do is go ahead and work through all of our tangent or interpolation types and take a look at how that will affect this animation so we can get comfortable with what each preset does. Now keep in mind, when we created our first animation, we noticed that it was smooth by default. Now what regulates that? Well, if you were to take a look at your set key button, to the right of that, we have our default in and out tangent types for new keys. So this is how we set our default interpolation. We have smooth at the top, and then next is linear, stepped, set tangents to slow, set tangents to fast, and then we end with spline and auto. So let's go ahead and take a look at what each of these choices do. Now we can access them from our curve editor. So what I'll do is go ahead and head over to the layer manager and show the creature's controls. All right, sweet. So from there, I'll just go ahead and select the controls with the same layer highlighted. Great, so now we get to see all of our keys. Let's go ahead and right click and access our curve editor. All right, so take a look. We have a lot going on here. And when I started this project, I started with step mode because this is a way of blocking in the animation. So if we were to go ahead and take all of our keys here and convert to stepped, you'll notice that the animation is going to be blocky. What stepped is doing is it says, all right, I'm going to keep the same value of the key until we move to the next key where the value changes, and then we'll see the value of that key. So it stays at one constant value until we move to the next key. And again, this is a great way to block in your work. It's the pose to pose method of animation. And I really enjoy it because it's more structured that way. And it's very easy to make corrections to your poses initially using this route, than smoothing out the animation and having to deal with a lot of distracting floating curves because of smooth interpolation. So that's just my workflow, but I really enjoy using step, but we have other choices here. We could also go ahead and work with auto, and what auto is going to do is it's going to basically flatten out all of our hills and valleys. So any point in the animation where there is a high point or low point, that's either considered a hill, if that's a high point, or a valley, if that's a low point. And any keys in between will be smooth between those two points. So if we were to go ahead and take a look at, let's say, one of our curves, I'll just go ahead and just deselect, I'll right click, and I'll choose Add Keys, and I'll just go ahead and add a key. And it doesn't really matter what curve we're using here, I just want to show you what auto does. All right, so now you'll see that this keyframe has smooth interpolation by taking a look at its tangent. Let me go ahead and right click and choose Move Keys so we can start to edit this. You'll see that as I start to slide this above the key here, that was once our hill key. Now, this key here has reoriented itself to match the state of this key that we have just slid above it. All right, so that's essentially what auto does, and it's a great way to smooth out our work, as you can see. And it's going to make sure that we don't run into any overshoots in our animations. Whereas, if we were to go with smooth, which is this last choice, you'll notice that this is going to keep an overshoot. Take a look at that. Because it's doing its best to make sure that this key is as smooth as possible. So, when it comes to tweaking your, your keyframe, if you do need smooth interpolation, you can work with smooth, but keep in mind, we don't have access to our tangency when we use smooth. So a good workflow would be, all right, go ahead and convert the key to smooth, but then go ahead and work with spline, which is going to keep the state of your key, but it's going to give you access over its tangential property. So we can go ahead and start to move our tangent around. Really, really nice stuff. And then we have set tangents to fast. And what this is going to do is it's going to cause the animation to speed up to the keyframe that we have set to fast. Following that, we have set to slow, 
which is going to smooth out the animation when we get to the selected key. With both, you'll notice again we don't have access to our tangents using these presets. Nor do we have access to the tangent when working with stepped or linear, which gives us a constant speed into this keyframe. So that's essentially what these presets do. Now with linear, this would be great for walks and runs when the feet plant and you want to make sure that there's no sliding. You can go ahead and make sure that that movement of the plant is set to linear again to make sure that it's moving back at a constant rate. You can learn more about this in our walk cycle and run cycle courses. But for this animation here, I might just go ahead and work with auto just to again prevent any overshoots. And if there needs to be an overshoot, we can just go ahead and create one easily by adjusting our tangency. Super helpful stuff. So again, in this lesson, we've learned about the different interpolation types here in 3ds Max. So just to reiterate, if I were to go ahead and select the ball, we have Auto, which is going to flatten out our hills and valleys, our high points and low points, but it's going to smooth out any keys in between. And then next we have Spline, which is essentially going to keep the key state, but it's going to give us access over its tangency. Now, when we work between auto and spline, you'll notice that it's not going to be a, a big change at all. However, if we were to run into a keyframe that had an overshoot, we can go ahead and convert it to auto, and that will help flatten out that key. So just to give you an idea, if I were to go ahead and take one of these and create an overshoot and start to kind of pull at this, you'll notice once we start to tweak this tangency, it is converted instantly to a spline tangent. But watch this, if we were to go ahead and switch this to auto, take a look, auto has now helped us smooth that curve out. All right, awesome. So that's basically what that does. I'll undo back to bring the key back because chances are it needs to be there. <laughs> and then next we have set to fast, which is gonna make sure that whenever we get to the key that we have set to fast, the animation will speed up when we get to that key. So you can see how blocky things get with that. But sometimes that might be useful if we're trying to work on, let's say, the weight in the character's hips in a walk cycle or pro probably a ball bounce where we want there to be a, a good feeling of weight when we actually make contact with the floor, when it bounces, then it rises, and then we'd want more of a hold. And in that case, when we get to the hold, we can go ahead and use spline or auto to smooth out our interpolation. Could also work with smooth if we like. Remember, with smooth, we don't have access to our tangency. All right, awesome. And then heading back over to our curve editor, we've also taken a look at set tangents to slow, which will make sure we have smooth interpolation between each keyframe. But even still, you can see how blocky things get. It's almost like there's a pause when we reach each keyframe. So you wouldn't want to apply this to everything, only where you need it. And then we also have stepped. Remember, this is a great tool to use for blocking in your work, feel free to take a look at animation blocking techniques in 3ds Max to learn how this can be utilized. Then of course we come to linear, which is going to make sure that we have a constant speed between each keyframe. So this is great to use when we want to make sure that our feet don't slide in a walk, or perhaps we need to so something in the animation to move at a constant speed, we'll go ahead and use linear. All right, sweet. And then we come to smooth, and we've taken a look at that. It'll make sure that all of our keyframes have smooth interpolation, which isn't necessarily a good thing because you can see how dangerous overshoots can be. Take a look at the beginning of the animation. You can see how the character kind of breaks and jumps out of the pose he should be at all because of that smooth interpolation. Without having access to our tangent, we couldn't modify anything like that. However, there are some areas where we do want overshoots and where smooth can work out to be advantageous. So it really depends on what you need from your animation. Heading back over to our curve editor, just wanted to make sure that we set this right back to auto so we can go ahead and smooth the animation out. But even still, it's going to take a matter of tweaking your tangents to get the exact look you want. 
So even with auto, where it does a great job at preventing overshoots, there might be moments when we want an overshoot. So it's just a matter of studying your work and making sure that you have the exact look and feel that you are aiming for.